I've wanted to ask you this for a while now. As you were watching our botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, particularly in the month of August, uh, what did you make of it as it was playing out in real time? Uh, strategically, a complete disaster uh, in terms of just handing that whole zone and vast lithium reserves and copper reserves into the hands of, yes, you've guessed it, China. Uh, but in terms of America's place in the world, that's perhaps even more significant because, you know, for over 100 years, we have been side by side in virtually every major conflict around the world at a massive cost in gold and blood. And yet, this decision was taken unilaterally without Joe Biden even consulting the British Prime Minister. Indeed, it took him 40 hours to return the call without any consultation with other NATO allies. And it really was a signal that America is withdrawing from the world and doing so in a completely irresponsible way. I mean, fancy fighting to keep the Taliban out for 20 years and then literally handing them the keys to the gates of Kabul. So very bad for America's standing globally. I think that's the really important takeout. From yeah, it. yeah, and they are now in charge of Afghanistan, um, and, and they are going to have the ability to, to harbor terrorists there, uh, which is a scary thought 20 years removed from September 11th. Uh, I'm curious, and it, I'm just thinking about, you know, we've got people hanging on to C-17 military jets taking off from Kabul airport. Uh, many died. Uh, what should Joe Biden have done differently? I know it's easy to sort of Monday morning quarterback the situation, but, yeah. but in your eyes, what should he have done differently? Well, look, I mean, the truth of it is we were all tired of being there for 20 years. But effectively, since 2014-15, what had been happening is that the Americans, with significant support from us, we had been helping the Afghan army to fight the forces of Taliban and other forces of jihadism. Uh, you know, you had not had a soldier killed in Afghanistan for 18 months we don't have one killed in Afghanistan for years. The Afghan army had lost 45,000 since 2014. So our right. role there, we weren't in the front lines anymore. We were giving military support. We were giving intelligence support. Uh, and, you know, Donald Trump himself said that you only walk out of Afghanistan once you've got a binding peace deal between the Taliban and the existing government. Now, that may be unrealistic, well, if it's unrealistic, you stay. After all, we've been in South Korea for 70 years. Yeah, yeah. Because we believe that helps to maintain Since the, the Korean War. So no, it's are, a great point. There are lots of precedents for having standing armies, small, very small. Right. Only 3,500 Americans were there. You know, there's lots of precedent for small standing armies staying there to maintain the status quo. And I think it's very interesting. Um, Biden tried to say, look, this was just Trump's policy. It wasn't. His was dependent upon a peace deal, there never was one. And America's reputation has, uh, has suffered over the last 10 months. Um, hopefully, that's something that, uh, that we can recover as a country. Uh, Nigel Farage, we appreciate your time. It's nice to see you, as always. Come back and see us soon. Well, thank you very much, and well done in Virginia to the Republican Party. Yes, big thank win. you very much. A big win for the uh, Republicans in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Nigel Farage, thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you soon. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.